The Bee Gees don't just record, they create their songs in the studio. Right. This new one's called Just In Case. And it's usually a romantic song. It's, you, it's either two people or it's three people. Uh, or it could be four people, depending on uh, what mood you're in. Um, in this case, it's a situation where the girl is trying to protect herself because it's, a, it, it's really a girl's song. And in this situation, she's, she doesn't want to give her heart away. So she's, she's, it's just in case. This is not the real thing. I don't want to give myself to you. And what are you so doing on the keyboards then, Morris? How do you, are you I'm sort of doing an arrangement at the same time as we're going. Find out where the heat is. And you haven't yeah. got all the words at the moment? No. no. All right. Well, so this is, this is yeah. basically what yeah. it is. Okay. And, and from, he, from here on, what you'll hear is us scatting to Fine. find the melody, the right melody. Morris will very often come up with a chord we did not expect him to play. And in fact, sometimes it's something he didn't it usually expect happens to play. In which case, we usually kill him. And or then severely I have, to, meet I have to find someone to tell me which one it was. Yeah, right. <laughs> was it the black ones or the white? <laughs> just, just talk me to that one section. Um, Or it could be that. We've got a G minor. Yeah. All right. At some point, we establish exactly what the melody is note for note. And then when we do our lyrics, we don't detract from that melody. So we, don't, we don't change the melody to go, f to go with certain words we may like. We religiously make the words fit the melody we've, we've pre-established. This is basically the way we always write. I mean, not, not always like this, but in terms of when we get the, the, lyric, the, the yeah. idea of the melody and the, yeah. the, the title together. We, yeah, first we look, for, we look for the core of the idea. What is the core of the song? And you're telling me this is love, but just in case, keep my heart in a secret place, safe under lock and key, till I know it's only me. But I've only got to be the one that's true, one for the other when the love comes through. See, heart is out of place, and I love you, but just in case. <laughs> no, B, okay. yes. B flat minor. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I was saying. The words that are there, how have they arrived there? Are all the words there? Are these just words? That in this case, um, it was just those first few, four lines. This is love, but just in case, I'll keep my heart in a secret place, safe under lock and key, till I know it's only me. And that thought in itself really gives, is the whole message of the song. I think the verse is actually shaping up pretty good. I think it just needs to be cleared up at the end of the, the choruses. Yeah. Can you show us the bit that isn't working and tell right. us what you're going to do about it? Right there, we've got to find something else, right? Yeah. Okay. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do about finding something Well, else? we had something actually we did before, which was when we went to the G minor. Oh, yeah. That thing. Then the yeah. B minor, B flat minor. Right, and that takes you back to the verse yeah. again. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's like a possibility. That, that could yeah. work. Yeah. In the late 70s, the Bee Gees wrote several international hits for their tragically ill-fated younger brother, Andy Gibb. He was his own worst enemy, in fact. I don't think he really knew where he was going, what he, want, what he wanted to do. I'm not even sure whether he would have really wanted to have stayed in, in music or do something else, but um, even now, now yeah, after what, eight years after we thought, I still don't know, I still don't really think I knew him. We did this tour in 79, the Spirits tour, and, and when the fever stop was really hot and it was quite an exciting time for all of us. We opened up in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, and then we were in Houston. Andy was there, and he just had a couple of hits and he was doing real well. And he joined us on stage. And I think it was probably one of the best nights I can remember. Ladies and gentlemen, our brother Andy! Just seeing Andy, I think at that time, so high on health. And so blown away with what was happening. Yeah. We were all looking at each other going, can you believe this is happening? Because it was a dream. It was something that 
I don't think many, many groups or many artists get to ever experience, but it was something like you can never forget. And to see it in his eyes, with the tears in his eyes while he was doing it, it was like, can we believe this is all happening? And I'll never forget that. That was probably one of the best nights I've ever had on stage, I think. While he was in Miami, the whole time we were making records, it was it was good, and he was good, and he was healthy, and um, he was leading a healthy lifestyle. And at some point, um, he got in with the wrong people, and decided he had to live in Hollywood, and went to Hollywood, and from then on, everything started to go the wrong way. You know, I mean, the press on that stuff was was a killer. I felt like, how could they? You know, you feel like you just want to say sod it all. You know, if I wasn't doing this, I wouldn't get this attention. You know. What upset you about the press? I mean? Well, the, the lies, just pure lies. I mean, they didn't know any truth at all. I mean, to, to put it in a, in a quick line, the, they used a, lo uh, used a local pub in Oxfordshire called Thatcher's, and all the press were there because it happened at Robin's house at the hospital. He was living in Robin's house down the road in Oxfordshire, in Tame. And they used this little pub as a headquarters for the press. And one of the guys ran in, picks up the phone, and started took calling, he said, calling his editor. He said, I've got some bad news, Chief. Uh, he goes, yeah, he says, yeah, it was natural causes. That, to me, put the whole thing in a nutshell. This is a kid who learned to fly three months before he died. So it's hard to say that it was too much drugs or too much drink. However, that was his problem. Towards the end, he, he went into a downhill spiral. He, went, he just went into drinking about as much as he could. And then, after he died, we found out that he had a heart disease and that he knew this, that he'd known it for the... For the the last couple of years, but he'd never told anybody. So my lover's room very much. This is, it's not a very old house, but they're very old beans. <laughs> uh, I may be wrong, but I think this house was used for children during the Blitz. Sometimes on a dark night, you can hear children's voices. We took this property about 1980, 1981. So we've been here about 16 years. The kids have had a fantastic time here. It's a pity we don't spend more time here, but they love it. You're not nippy. <laughs> I'm a bit nippy. Away from the Miami studio, Robin enjoys his Oxfordshire home, an ancient church building. OK, this is the Great Hall, what's left of it. This has got quite a good history. This is where they had the court to decide on the sentencing of Joan of Arc, who was burned in France. This took place in here, along with other sentences for local people, which included being whipped bareback up and down the high street of Tain for things like adultery and other offences. It was built by Robert Grosthess in the 1100s and uh, has been the home of the bishops of Lincoln right up until the Reformation. Where we lived in Australia, we were always living on, on the sea, Bondi Beach and places like that in Sydney beautiful over there so uh, when we first came to Miami it was it was reminded us very much of that there was a big hurricane relief concert being planned to raise money for Miami and we said yes we'd love to do that it was just magic They sing as magnificently now as, as I remember them 30 years ago. I see no difference in the way they sing now as to when I was just a fan like everybody else. Next to the Beatles, they were probably the most creative group ever. On the up-tempo song, which is called I Surrender, I encouraged them to be co-producers with me on that because the demo was so well-constructed, half the work was already done. I surrender. Right? 
And we're going to have to kind of just nail this and uh, double it. You know? Well, the process for the Bee Gees, obviously, if you listen to the records closely, they're pro they were very serious about the process. And I'm happy to report 30 years later, they're still just as serious. After I've signed off on something, quite often um, Barry is still in there working. He let up the sky. What was wrong with that? Absolutely nothing. I think there's a lot of thought that goes in and play it and listen to it the next day. Um, but not to the point of being a, a fanatic about it, just wanting to get it absolutely right, and that's their style.